what's up? My name's Kay, and today I'm going to talk about taking AP STEM classes. You have to forward. So this is the second part of my two-part series on AP classes, and we're going to talk about STEM classes today. I have slightly less experience with STEM classes. Um, I took Calc, AB, and BC, and I took AP Stat, and AP Micro, I don't know if that's STEM or Humanities and in between, um, I took AP Physics, but that's it. So I didn't take like any of the other AP Sciences. Um, so yeah, I have like less experience here than with AP Humanities, I'm more of a Humanities person, but I have enough experience, and overall this video should be shorter than the last one because honestly you need a lot less accommodations in STEM classes and humanities classes, at least in my experience, they're just generally like easier um, in terms of vision, at least. Um, the rest is, is up to you. Um, again, like I'm legally blind, I'm not totally blind, so I don't know if it would be easier or harder if you're totally blind because I'm not, I don't have experience with that. Um, but from my perspective, it's easier. So let's jump right in and first talk about the exam like we did in the last video, and then after talking about the exam, we'll move on to talking about accommodations that you need in the class itself. So, um, this is the same as the last video, but the general accommodations I have during my exam. Um, I use a CCTV, I have double time, I have breaks as needed, a reader, although I don't use a reader in STEM classes. And one thing that I forgot to mention in my last video, but that does apply to my last video just as much, is that I have a three hour exam limitation, um, which is because I'm legally blind, I have visual fatigue. Um, my eyes just like kill after trying to read an exam for a long period of time because like really my vision is just like not good enough to, to do that so that's why I have an exam limitation I have well an exam time limitation um I have a friend who uh is more so like totally blind he has some vision but like his vision is worse than mine and he does not have this limitation because he has all his stuff through like braille and audio and he doesn't do it like visually at all so he doesn't need that three hour exam limitation. She's always super jealous of me for having it, but I really need it. My eyes get like awfully tired. It's very bad. Oh, also, I'm remembering so many things that I forgot in my last video, but I also get to wear a hat during my exams, which is a specific accommodation that like is literally written in my accommodations because apparently hats aren't allowed because I guess like you cheat with them. I don't know, I personally don't cheat with my hat, um, but it is in my accommodations that I'm allowed to have it, and I absolutely need it because of those bright fluorescent lights. Um, I have albinism, so my eyes are super sensitive to the light, so that is a must have for me. So I would say if you have albinism too, your eyes are sensitive to light, definitely get your hat into your accommodations because you're not allowed to have it without accommodation. Like if it's not in your written stuff in the college board. Um, if you think you'll really need it, uh, I would also like maybe do sunglasses. I didn't do that because for me just wearing a hat's enough, but I have some friends who prefer wearing sunglasses instead of wearing a hat, so just whatever it is you went like with that, definitely get it in your accommodations um, so you aren't unpleasantly surprised the day of the exam when you're not allowed to use this stuff. So starting with the multiple choice section of the exam, this I really need nothing. Um, well obviously I need my CCTV, I need my double time, but I don't need my reader to do anything. Really I just have to read the problem and solve it and answer the question and there isn't really anything a reader can do. I will say if you think you're going to need a reader for this for any reason, definitely talk to um, like your school about getting a good reader first because for me, my reader was not able to really read it because she didn't know enough about calculus to like know what an integral symbol was and things like that. So um, I remember she tried to read me like some of the instructions and she like just didn't know what the words were to read it, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you get a math teacher to be reading it to you if you think you're gonna need that so that they can actually read it. But for me, I had no problem just reading it myself, so that was fine. I really just need help with reading when it's like long passages. If it's just like, you know, a couple of letters and numbers making up an equation, like, I'm fine. Oh, now he wants to play. Um, so moving on to the FRQ. Um, it's the same thing, I just need double time and I need my reader to leave me alone so I can answer the questions. Um, I write it right on the document, I don't like type anything. Um, this will probably be different if it was like 
I don't even know what, like, if it was maybe bio, maybe they would have more, like, explain how this, like, body system works and then I type it but I, I have no clue about the AP bio exam I'm not a bio person so I don't know but for me I just wrote with pencil on my exam paper and yeah it was fine I used my CCTV to do it but I didn't need any extra help from a reader um there are like diagrams and graphs now my dog is chewing on my foot yes <laughs> it's not his fault his favorite toy was under my foot I know I know I know here um, I'm sorry. Hopefully this doesn't distract you too much from uh, the video. Um, so for diagrams and graphs, I know we talked about this a bunch in my AP Humanities video. Um, diagrams and graphs are tricky for me. Personally, I just did AP Physics and AP Calc. Both of those had like very straightforward diagrams. I didn't have any trouble with it. Um, like especially calculus. I mean that was just like graphs. It was nothing like other than a graph and with that you know I can follow the grid and the lines and like see what's happening. I'm sorry for my loud dog. Um, I guess he had to wake up from his nap eventually. So for bio again I know nothing about bio but I know when I took like my little honors bio class that everyone was required to take um, there were a lot of diagrams that I had a lot of trouble with. So for some of these I well okay so I had a braille version of the textbook with all the diagrams that I used and that was like completely crucial. So I would guess that if there are the same types of diagrams in AP Bio, you would need Braille diagrams. Um, also for some of the diagrams, I um, chose, I had like 3D models that I would use because like for me, I had a lot of trouble learning like cell division because there were just so many little things in the like Braille model, it just got confusing. So we used like actual like, like things like objects to like pretend they were chromosomes and like learn how it worked um on your ap exam you probably couldn't actually get like real like 3d objects but just for learning the material that helped and from that i figured out how to interpret the braille diagram and you definitely can get braille diagrams um on your ap exam as like an accommodation and i think i was approved for that accommodation but didn't use it or something I don't really remember what happened with that, but okay, so that was it for the exams. Really, I didn't have any trouble with my AP STEM exam, so hopefully that's the same for you. Um, but now we're going to move on to like the homework, course load, classwork, all that sort of stuff. And I think with STEM classes, that's really where the challenge comes in, more so than the exam itself. Um, so for physics, when I took AP physics, we had these like demonstrations all the time, like every single day. Our um, teacher would show us all these cool demonstrations and I could never see them and so I just had to you know work with talking to my teacher uh, telling him that I need him to verbally like describe what's happening and at first he was not very into doing this he was pretty resistant but he got over it and by the end he was like awesome at it he did a really really good job he described everything it was great um, and also for demonstrations where like he needed a volunteer to help him he would pretty much always pick me because like if I was in front of the class like physically doing the demo my laptop's about to fall if I was in front of the class like physically doing the demonstration then usually I could like feel what was happening or even just see it better because it's right there um and everything's Kobe tactile he made them tactile like or he would like let me check out the materials he was using before um he would actually do it so for me, the combination of verbal description with tactile stuff when possible um, was really what I did. Occasionally, we would take videos of like things that were happening in test tubes or whatever, and I would like watch them on my iPad zoomed in um, to like get what happened, cause like so I could see it. Um, but for the most part, we just did like verbal descriptions and tactile, and it worked. Okay, so for any like physics or math classes where you have to like be doing really math like equations and stuff on a board um, I used the app called join.me and I used it with my iPad to see the board so the teacher would always have either a Promethean board a smart board uh, or a dot cam just with like a piece of paper um, that they were writing on and then this app was a screen sharing app so whatever was on their laptop screen would show up on my iPad screen um, and with using, you know, a smart board or a dot cam, um, or a Promethean board, you know, same thing. 
that would show up on their laptop screen. So then it would also show up on my iPad screen and I could just, you know, double tap with three fingers to zoom in and just see what it was. And that was how I saw the board. I did not use my CCTV for seeing the board in high school for a lot of reasons. Um, I can do a whole video on that maybe, but really it just came down to, it was super old and unreliable. It did not work. The school was not willing to buy me a new one. Um, and also it was ginormous to lug around our school and our school was like this big two building, like it was not a viable option really. So I used my iPad to see the board. And then for homework, classwork, any type of work that I'd have to do, I just use my iPad. Um, I used the app PDF Expert and it just let me annotate right on it. And you know, just, just doing my work, it was very easy. I wrote everything on my iPad. Um, back in high school, I just had a stylus with like a very old iPad that I used and it worked perfectly fine. Um, when I got to college, that stopped working for me because surprisingly, like I didn't realize how fast professors could talk and they go so quickly in lecture that I like did not have time to write it all down. So I had to switch to like a nicer iPad with an Apple Pencil, but that's a whole other story. So really for high school, just an iPad with stylus were totally fine. I had all my homework on my iPad. It was great because you could write ginormous. Um, like you could zoom in and write ginormous and you could see everything and then you could zoom out and it would look normal to your teacher. Um, and it was just awesome. I loved it. So, so that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Um, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.